Hi, and welcome to this quick look at a year one applied spectroscopy unstructured question. So it's just going to take you through how to use each piece of information that the question gives you to arrive at a structure for a compound. So we'll start by taking the percentage by mass data and using it to calculate the empirical formula. So it tells you it's a branch chain organic compound that doesn't have E and Z isomers. So the E and Z isomers suggest it has a carbon-carbon double bond, but it must be that it's got two identical groups and one carbon atom of the CC double bond in order for E and Z isomers to not actually work for that structure. If it's a branch chain, it must have a side chain of some kind, for example, a methyl group. So the first thing is to divide the percentage by relative atomic mass for each element, which gives us these values. Now, obviously, they're not whole numbers. To convert them into whole numbers, you divide the ratio through by the smallest number. And that gives us 2, 3, and 1. So our conclusion can be the empirical formula is C2H3O. Next, we can link the empirical formula to the molecular formula using the mass spectrum. So taking our conclusion from the previous slide, we can then just apply an mz value for each peak. So what's interesting is the m plus peak has an mz value of 88. If we add up the value of the empirical formula, that adds up to 44. So that one divides into the other twice. So the molecular formula must be C4H602. So that conclusion can be taken to the infrared spectrum. Now in the infrared spectrum, you've got two significant peaks, one representing a C double bond O and one representing an O single bond H. And this is a wide peak, a broad peak, so we're going to say it's a carboxylic acid. So from this, we can take that there's two oxygen atoms in the molecular formula, so the functional group could indeed be COOH. So now we know a little bit more, we can look at the fragments from the mass spectrum that we didn't look at before. So each fragment can be given a, um, a, a identity based on the MZ value. So we can give peak Y a COOH plus, and we can give peak X C3H5 plus, which is what's remaining behind after you take COOH away from C4H602. So finally, what we need to do is bring out that all together to give a structure. So our C3H5 is one, two, three carbons, and one, two, three, four, five hydrogens. And then our COOH that we agreed on is over here. So um, hopefully this has been a useful look at how you can arrive at a structure using a variety of different bits of information. Until next time, thanks for listening and see you soon.